All right, so now that we've seen how to calculate the standard deviation, we're gonna look at it, how to interpret the standard deviation. We're not gonna bother interpreting the variance because things get a little bit weird when we try to interpret the variance. We're just gonna focus on the standard deviation. So as a reminder, the standard deviation is a measure of how spread out our data is. So for this first example, I have two different graphs that are showing the average IQ score for incoming freshmen at two different universities. The standard deviation for the first university is 16.2. The standard deviation of the second university is 8.1. What relationship do you see between the graphs and the standard deviation? Well, hopefully what you see is that University A has a larger standard deviation and their, I, their graph of the IQ scores are more spread out. University A has a minimum around 55 and a maximum of potentially 145. While University B's scores are between 85 and 130. So University A has a much larger spread in their IQ scores. So what we can get from this is that the larger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is. And that's kind of just an in general on what standard deviation tells us. If you're looking at two different data sets and one data set has a much higher standard deviation than the other, then that means that the range of the data set is much higher than it is for the second one, as we see here with these two universities. So let's look at another example. So in this example, you own a pizza place and you have two different delivery drivers, Amanda and Bethany. Both drivers have a mean delivery time of 20 minutes. So on average, they're getting the, the pizzas delivered in 20 minutes. Amanda's standard deviation is three minutes. Bethany's standard deviation is seven. Which delivery driver would you keep and which one would you fire? So you have to fire one of them. Okay, budget cuts, whatever it may be, you have to fire one of your delivery drivers. You can't afford to keep them both. So you went to look at their average delivery time, their mean, and you saw that they both have a mean of 20 minutes. So you couldn't use that to make your decision. So you decide to look at the standard deviation and you see that there is a difference in the standard deviation for their deliveries. So if we look at Amanda, here's Amanda. I'm gonna represent this with just a line. So Amanda has an average of 20 minutes. That's her average. And then she has a standard deviation of three minutes. So that means sometimes she's getting the pizza there in 17, sometimes it's taking her 23, or anywhere in between. This is not exact what I'm doing on how to look at this, but it's approximate, okay? Meanwhile, Bethany also has a mean of 20 minutes. But she sometimes takes only 13 minutes to get the pizza delivered, but then sometimes takes 27 minutes to get the pizza delivered.
So to decide which one to fire and which one to keep, what you want to look at is consistency. Which delivery driver would you say is more consistent? And Amanda is more consistent with her deliveries. If you tell the customer consistent that their pizza is going to be there in 20 minutes, you know that Amanda is going to get closer to that 20 minute mark than Bethany. Yeah, Bethany might get it there in 13 minutes, which is great, but then sometimes it's taking her 27 minutes or possibly even longer because this standard deviation recall is also an average. So Amanda is more consistent, so you should keep her because she has a smaller standard deviation. Her delivery times are less all over the place. They're less spread out. So there's a couple of different examples on how we can interpret standard deviation in terms of what it's telling us about our data.